All right, welcome back. We're here with Expedition STEM. I'm here with Alexis, and we're here at the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair. And what school are you from? I'm from the Roanoke Valley Governor's School in Franklin County, Roanoke, Virginia. Okay, and you are here because you're a finalist. Can you tell us a sort of like what level of award you won in Virginia? Absolutely. So um, our school is actually required to do a science fair project, and so I won first place in that fair. I won first place in regional. I won a two grand prize winners, and I also placed first in the state fair. And then I was blessed to come here to the international science fair. Awesome. So another another smart young student <laughs> here at the ISF. And so we were walking by, and we saw this social media engagement project, and it looked pretty interesting. And so what's your project about? So my project basically takes the topic of addiction and social media and combines them. So I looked at network topologies, which are formations of people in networks and how they interact with each other, and their recovery phenotype, which is basically um, how they uh, review recovery in their minds. They're like recovery I ideas. Mm -hmm. And so I took that and combined them to see how um, that would affect their engagement in a social network. And I did this in people who were in recovery from substance use addiction. So opioids, nicotine, alcohol, marijuana, heroin, basically any type of ad addiction you could think of, my participants were probably dependent upon. Okay, and what were your results? So they engaged in this network, uh, network interaction, yeah. What kind of results did you get? So basically, um, those who were in a more cluster lattice network, or that's kind of a redundant network, they did better in the network than those who were in a small world, which is a less redundant, more linear pattern. And this is because there's redundancy in the network. So repetition is a very key component to recovery. And so by engaging in a cluster lattice network, participants are able to um, see positive reactions and want to do positive behaviors. They're going to see negative um, interactions and not want to do those negative behaviors. They're going to want to refrain from the harmful effects. And so those people um, actually had more engagement in the network and less relapses in those in the small world. Additionally, um, spirituality was not a factor. I looked at that because those who are more spiritual are usually more prone to abstinence recovery. You're not wanting to do drugs after they're um, done with their addiction. And so there was actually no effect in that, which is positive because anyone across the board can use this. Additionally, those who are more focused in their recovery or more motivated were more apt to remain in recovery. And that's positive as well because across the board, whatever kind of treatment option you use, whether it's going to be um, a support group or a one-on-one face-to-face -on -face counseling session, if you're more motivated, you're going to be um, more likely to recover. So this is kind of a, a supplement or a very comparative way to use treatment. Um, additionally, those who um, saw more positive posts, if you, I created 60 daily posts for this experiment. Um, it's kind of modeled after Facebook. And so the more positive posts got more positive interactions than the negative ones. And that's due to the fact that people enjoy positive affirmations. So What's an example of like a positive post and a negative post? Okay, so um, actually right here, this is a one an example. So you're not alone in your addiction. This is a positive post. Okay. And as well as I'm the key to my recovery. That's basically telling people um, you're on the right track. You can do this. And um, this is something that you need to continue doing. Whereas a... Um, a negative post would be like this woman right here. She's smoking and she's losing her beauty very quickly because she's smoking. And the person in the bottom is actually trapped by their addiction in a box. So um, personally, as a participant, if I was a participant, I would like to identify more the first picture than the second one. <laughs> right. And so these posts you created, how often were they like appearing on the, on the yeah. site? So there were 12 different categories and 60 posts. And there were 12 weeks in the experiment. And so for posts one through five, so categories one through five are one week. And then two through six are next week. One post is posted every single day. And um, each post is given equal exposure through the rotation. OK. And how many participants were in the study? 256. OK. And what were some of the results about like how many went back into relapse or um, compared yeah. to the small world and the lattice? Um, I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but um, definitely a significant number of people who were in the small world network, which is less redundant network, they relapsed a lot more than the uh, cluster lattice did, as you can see in this graph right here. Um, the purple represents the small world and the green represents the lattice. And so even across the board in the specific weeks, those in the cluster lattice network showed fewer relapses than those in the small world. Awesome. So we know there's many sort of recovery methods for, that are out mm -hmm. there for people with addictions, right. but you're saying or you told me earlier that right now there's no social network right. one, right? And so it makes all too much sense to, you know, implement this in right. the real world. And yeah, I'm glad to see that your study yielded positive results because, you. <laughs> you know, Alcoholics Anonymous is one of them. Yes. And it's anonymous, so, you know, but there still might be some sort of hesitation for someone to go to AA. Exactly. Whereas, you know, the social network thing, they're engaging with the support group, but they don't have to actually, like, go out and public and maybe face that sort of embarrassment or something like that. So uh, that's great. Actually, we want to ask one more question. So sure. 
We know that there's overall a shortage of women in science, mm -hmm. but you go to a specialized school in Virginia. Yes, sir. It's a STEM school. So can you kind of talk about the different subject matters that the women there are sort of engaged in? And yeah. Is there like a common focus or? Yeah, sure. I mean, there really isn't a common focus, but the school that I go to is called the Roanoke Valley Governor School for Science and Technology. And there, um, students from all across um, southwestern Virginia attend that school. And there are a lot of women at the school that I go to. There really isn't a predominant focus, as I said, but um, we're required to do a science fair project at our school. And so women are engaged in um, chemical engineering, uh, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, um, biomedical engineering, plant sciences, astronomy robotics, um, behavioral sciences. Um, there's actually a girl who um, is trying to do electricity with water and piezoelectric crystals. Mm -hmm. um, I have a friend here who worked in, my, in microbiology and she did streptomyces. So it's a, a type of bacteria. So I mean, there's people engaged all across the board. Awesome. And what would you say to those women that are maybe watching this video or that, you know, they want to go into science, but they're not really sure. Yeah, so there really are no limitations whatsoever to what you can do in your life. I never thought I'd be here at ISEF. I've done science fair for four years, and this is the first year I've been able to do this. My mentor actually was a woman. So, I mean, definitely women have, there are no boundaries, there are no limits. Just chase your dreams and follow your passions. Yeah, we need more of you out there. We need yes. more women in science. You know, they, <laughs> they bring a whole different thing to the table. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so, you know, if you're... If you're in middle school or high school and you know thinking about college and that mm -hmm. sort of thing, definitely get involved. Science fairs seem to be a good way to sort of get engaged. Yes, and sir. A lot of these topics are very advanced, <laughs> and you know there's a lot of words on this board that I don't know. So, just even doing these projects, like you learn a whole lot, and then you, then you probably get to find out like what you want to do in college and that sort of. Do you yes, have any sir. idea what you want to major in? Yes, I'm actually going to the University of Virginia next year to major in nursing. Oh, okay. I want to be a nurse practitioner. Awesome. So. Thank yeah, you. So. We're here at ISEF. Thanks, Alexis, for showing us this. Uh, good luck, and we hope you know score high in your category. Thank you guys so much. All right, thank you. <laughs>